Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Hi, how are ya? Hey, what's up you guys? It's me, Luke, and welcome back to another video, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. So today's video is really, really exciting. I literally just about an hour ago finished watching the first episode in Shane Dawson's brand new docu-series, and I've been taking extensive notes, and I have a lot to say. So in today's video, we are doing a review slash commentary of the first episode in Shane Dawson's new series, The Beautiful World of Jeffree Star. I don't really know if that's the name of the series or the name of the first episode, because the series is definitely going to be about more than just Jeffree Star, that's for sure. So some of you may know that a few weeks ago, I just finished up my MTV Tanner Turns 21 series where I went ahead and reacted to every single episode. I lost a lot of brain cells during that experience, but you guys seem to like it and it brought a lot of you here. So it was all worth it. I think. But I'm not going to be reacting to Shane Dawson's series because that would take way too long. Each episode is like an hour. And besides, unlike the Tanner Turns 21 series, I assume that you guys are going to watch all of these episodes. So what I'm going to be doing is each time there's a new episode, I'm going to watch it, take my notes, and then come on here and talk to you guys, give you my thoughts and opinions, my review, my commentary on the episode, and speak about what I liked about the episode, what I didn't like, my conspiracies, and my predictions for the future videos. We're just going to chat. It's like an after show special. It's going to be a lot of fun, so I hope you stick around. If you are new here, I post commentary and critique videos every single week. So make sure that you subscribe and turn on the post notifications bell so that you never miss another upload because <laughs> why would you want to? Am I right? Validate me. Anyway guys, enough rambling. Let's just hop right into it. So I was going to make a reaction slash commentary video on the trailer for the series, but to be honest, the trailer left me a little bit underwhelmed and I did not have that much to say. So let me just go ahead and talk about it really quickly first. The reason I wasn't a huge fan of the trailer is because it wasn't really a trailer, at least not a traditional trailer in a sense, because there was no talking, there was no showing what the storyline was going to be. It was kind of just like a montage to a song and do not get me wrong, I love that song Prom Queen, but the song didn't really make much sense for the series like I just didn't think it fit what the series seemed to be about but you know what that doesn't really matter like I couldn't really gauge what it was going to be about I was like is this about Jeffrey's life is this about Shane's life is this about the beauty community like blah 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 I think I finally figured it out so I don't necessarily think that the series is an extension on the first Jeffrey Star series that Shane did I think that series was all about redeeming Jeffrey and showing Jeffrey's vulnerable side and just really showing YouTube and the community that he's actually a good person and everything that happened in the past and just a really fun series to go ahead and see the crazy life that is Jeffree Star and just all of the tea and drama that it surrounds him because there is always so much of it. I think what this series is going to be about is Shane Dawson investigating the beauty community and discovering all of its secrets with one of the biggest insiders in the community, Jeffree Star. I honestly don't think it would make sense to do it with any other beauty guru. Jeffree Star is the biggest beauty guru and somehow always seems to be in the middle of drama and somehow always seems to go out unscathed like he always comes out on top. I don't know, he's a very powerful man. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> More on that later. But I also think it's really interesting because in the trailer you could see parts with Shane and Ryland and when they got engaged and stuff from their life and I think what it kind of is is since they've been filming this series for so long it's going to show aspects of his life along with it so I don't think that calling this series the beautiful world of Jeffree Star was really a good name because on face value it looks like the series is just going to be about Jeffree Star when I think it is going to be about so much more but I think that may just be the name for the first episode because later on the second episode that Shane reveals the title of is the business of the beauty community which is so flipping exciting more on that later <laughs> but other stuff that we saw in the trailer that was touched on in the first episode was Dramageddon 1 and Dramageddon 2. Now if you don't really keep up with drama or the beauty community and you're like me and you just could not be bothered to watch a million different videos on the same topic, girl I got your back because I made a video, just one video, I know, shocking, on Dramageddon 1 and one video on Dramageddon 2. So I will go ahead and link them down below but I'm sure all of you are aware of what they're about. The first Dramageddon was with Gabriel Zamora, Laura Lee, Nikita Dragon and Manny MUA against Jeffree Star and then the second Dramageddon was kind of between Tati Westbrook and James Charles, but then Jeffree Star kind of slipped his way in there, kind of attacked James Charles. So if you are interested in either of those, make sure you check out my two videos. It's a great synopsis of the entirety of Dramageddon so that you don't have to spend hours trying to figure out what happened. Anyway, moving on. In the trailer, we saw some really exciting things. We saw Shane and Jeffree reacting to the James and Tati situation. We saw them mentioning Manny MUA. There was a lot in there. Like there was a lot to unpack in the trailer. I just wasn't really a fan of the way that it was packaged, if that makes any sense. But anyway, that is enough about the trailer. I mean, it's a Shane Dawson series, so of course I'm going to watch. Of course, everyone's going to watch. He is the proclaimed king of YouTube. Enough about the trailer. Let's go ahead and hop into my thoughts on the first episode. <laughs> Let me go ahead and grab my notes. Got to grab my receipts. So the beginning of the episode was really <laughs> dramatic. I love that about Shane. A lot of people complain that Shane over dramatizes things with the way he films and the way he edits, but honestly, I think it makes it so much more entertaining. And if you've watched Shane Dawson for a long time, you know that that is what he is like. And one thing I really loved about this episode that I felt was really lacking 
in some of the previous Shane episodes like Jake Paul series. I don't feel like we got a lot of Shane in that series and a lot of his personality and that is why I did not enjoy the Jake Paul series. If you want to hear my thoughts and opinions or critiques on that, I made two videos on that link down below. I was just not a fan of that series because I don't give a crap about Jake Paul at all and I was watching it for Shane and we didn't get that much of Shane but I think in this series it's going to have its serious moments. I mean there was a lot of crying in that trailer but it's also going to have its comedic moments and you totally saw that in this episode. This was a perfect blend of like comedic timing and emotional stuff and even the over dramatic stuff that just made it so funny and I really love that. I thought this episode was really really a fun journey. It had its peaks and valleys. It was not one note. There were so many funny parts and so many touching parts but anyway I'm jumping ahead of myself. So the episode begins with Shane at his house and he is playing around with makeup, playing with his dog, playing with Ryland. I think it was really cute you know just showing the simplicity of his life so that later on when we saw Jeffrey's life we could see that really stark comparison because there is a lot of juxtapositioning in this episode between Shane and Jeffrey's life because they are so wildly different. One thing I thought was really really interesting was that Shane Dawson finally addressed the controversy or kind of the stuff that people have been talking about for a while about how Shane Dawson always pretends to be poor and makes poor jokes when he clearly is not. I've even mentioned that before. I thought it was kind of odd so I was actually really thankful that he addressed this. I thought it was really interesting. He kind of just spoke about how he's not poor like he knows that but he grew up poor and he worked hard to have what he has now but even so there are YouTubers who have a smaller following than him who have so much more money than him and are on the Forbes list and doing all these big great things. He just says he's not very smart with business and you know I totally get that because you you can see all these YouTubers like Lily Singh has her own late night show. I mean it's an absolute flop but whatever. Liza Koshy has her YouTube original show. Basically what I'm trying to say is there are all these YouTubers who diversify their revenue streams and do so many different things but Shane Dawson is a very introverted person. He almost never goes to events. He almost always has people grab his awards for him. He has really bad social anxiety and all of that so he doesn't really leave his house that much. So he just doesn't do a lot of business things. He has his merch but that's pretty much it. He doesn't really add new merch. He just has the same merch. He had his book but that was ages ago. I believe Shane when he says that he doesn't have as much money as all these other people. Don't get me wrong he's probably still rich. Not probably definitely. Like we see the house, we see the views, we see it all but he totally deserves that. I can understand why people have an issue with him making poor jokes but the only time he actually really does make poor jokes is when he is around Jeffrey and honestly anyone can see poor around Jeffrey. If you watch Jeffrey's video with the Dolan twins, the Dolan twins are freaking loaded. He even made the Dolan twins feel poor. I think Jeffrey is just so rich that even rich people feel poor compared to him. So I get it and I think it adds to the humor. I think Shane in the series with Jeffrey is gonna be like our anchor like we're gonna relate to him because Jeffrey Star's world is so out of this world and so different from ours that Shane will kind of bring us back to reality but I just thought it was kind of nice how he addressed that because nothing bothers me more when influencers just don't address shit like you think that you can just ignore stuff and it's gonna go away it's not okay <laughs> anyway moving on from that so Shane Dawson says his farewell to Ryland I was wondering why it was so dramatic but then Shane spoke about his really bad flight anxiety and how whenever his life is doing really well and he's so happy it makes him even more anxious to go on planes in case something happens and he's so happy he doesn't want to die and I thought that was really sweet because it just shows that Shane is finally in a really happy place which I thought was really nice because you know Shane has been struggling for so long with his mental health issues if you've read his book <laughs> I've read both not to flex but yeah I thought that was really nice and then they went on the plane and that was so <laughs> incredibly funny when like the plane was moving and making all these noises and Shane was reacting I honestly love that the entire scene when Jeffrey pulled up and he just looked so so badass like with his bodyguards and he just hopped on that plane like hopped off the plane at LA with a dream in my car to get home. Anyway moving on so Shane and Jeffrey hop onto the plane this is the first time we see them interact in this video and of course Shane and Jeffrey have such a great relationship they bounce off of each other so much and they're so funny and they're so different that it just creates like this really funny moment like whenever they're around each other I love it so much but anyway so they're on the plane and they're talking about where they're going they're going to open up a Morphe store in Sacramento and then Shane asks Jeffrey you know this these you, go to, you know, usually me, James Charles, Jacqueline Hill, whoever's free. Yeah, we like that. Yes, today. Which is just honestly so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and ironic given everything that's happened because this must have been filmed ages ago like back in March or February or something and obviously with everything that's transpired with Jacqueline and Hill's lipsticks and with the Tati and James drama that Jeffrey got involved in I just think it aged so perfectly like a fine wine so that was absolutely hilarious <laughs> just another moment that I thought was really funny on how dramatic they make the editing is uh, Jeffrey takes a bite out of a slice of pizza and the sound effect they put there is just so funny <laughs> Later on the episode, they kind of make Jeffrey out to seem like the leader of a mafia group. Shane talks about how Jeffrey is like so assertive and such a boss and he has everybody in his clothing and he's walking up and there's all these bodyguards with guns and he speaks about how <laughs> Jeffrey kind of seems like he's in the mafia and he's the leader of it and then he shows like all these dramatic shots of Jeffrey, how they were telling each other 
their secrets. And I'm not even gonna lie, like they edit so good that I actually got scared of Jeffrey for a second there. I was like, oh, this man is powerful. He's going out of Trump? I just thought that comparison was so funny. Like, I don't know, I'm just like in love with this episode. Since I'm praising it so much, I thought I would go ahead and pop a critique in there because what is a video without one? I thought that there were some parts in the beginning of the video that did not need to be as long. Like, I thought that the parts where they were at the house with the dogs in Ryland, like, I thought that was really cute and I think it was really great to show Shane's life, but I think that could have been shortened a little bit. And I have this critique with all of Shane's series is I feel like there's always a lot of added fluff that isn't necessary. That is such a small critique. I honestly just put it in there because I don't want people to think that I'm being biased. One thing that was really interesting was how Shane spoke about how he was really anxious to kind of enter the beauty community because it's kind of such a superficial industry and everybody just judges your appearance. And something I like didn't even know about was that people actually make YouTube videos about Shane Dawson's weight. Like that is crazy. Like he showed these videos where people would zoom in on his body and talk about his weight gain. I don't know. That's just so horrible. It's so sad. And I guess when you're an influencer, you're constantly under a microscopic lens and everybody's judging you but it's just so sad to be judged for something like that when we all know that his weight is something that Shane has struggled with forever it's just sad that there's people out there like that like personally I don't give a crap like how big he is I just care about him and what he has to say but that was really sad but I honestly thought it was so beautiful when Jeffrey was consoling Shane and reassuring him I thought that was such a cute moment between the two of them and uh, Jeffrey can be sweet see sometimes like there's a person under there under all that makeup and Botox and filler and Gucci and diamonds and Louis Vuitton and tattoos and fake nails and wigs there's a person under there somewhere <laughs> alrighty guys sorry I had to pop off for a bit and give my laptop a break because she was having a literal aneurysm so I popped her a Xanax and she's all good now anyway moving on so another part I really liked was when Shane walked into Jeffrey's presidential suite and he literally beelined straight for the food and gets so excited like honestly me anytime I go literally anywhere sometimes if an event has free food that will literally be the only reason I go and I will just sit in front of the food section and just shove my face because food really is one of the greatest parts of life something else I thought was really funny is the day of the opening when Jeffrey is revealed for the first time when he walks out the elevator and he has his makeup and his outfit all done did he is literally beast mode boss mode he doesn't even she Shane he just walks straight past him <laughs> Hi Jeffrey. I thought that part was so funny. Shane this entire video, he just killed me. I just miss the Shane. I feel like we haven't seen him for a while. Like it just feels like I'm watching the old school Shane videos that I miss so much and uh, I just love it. I'm like getting so giddy. I've been a fan of Shane literally since like 2012 when his, con when his content was so controversial. If you know, you know. So uh, it's just so cool to see how far he's come but I miss the old Shane sometimes. Okay, so then the actual opening happens and there is just so much commotion. There is an insane amount of people. It's just so interesting once again to see the juxtaposition between Jeffrey's confidence and how confident he is and how shy Shane is and you can just tell that he's not in his element and I would totally be the same way in front of a crowd that big but then later on when they go into the car on the way home and everything Jeffrey and Shane have kind of a heart-to-heart -heart and Jeffrey talks about how even though he has all the success he still gets really anxious when he like has launches because he doesn't know if they're gonna do well and everything which I thought is so nice because somebody who has so much money and sells so many products and has a multi-millionaire company it's so cool to see that he's still humble in that sense he's not one of those people that's just like oh, yeah of course my stuff's gonna sell out like it's the best on the market and all that type of stuff so I thought that was really nice and I thought what he said was really cool as well where he said to Shane that sometimes the haters feel the loudest and the supporters are the most silent which I think is such a nice note because if you are gonna do YouTube or anything or just be public or even in life the hate always seems so much louder than the support but more often than not you will have so much more support than you will have hate you just gotta choose what you listen to okay so at 45 minutes into the video this is when stuff started to get really really juicy so this is when Jeffrey and Shane start talking about the first drama get in and kind of his side of it and how he had literally just wrapped up the series and had his launch for his new palette and how everything was great and amazing and how all of a sudden Gabriel Zamora and Nikita Dragon, Laura Lee and Manny MUA decided to go ahead and post that photo and then that started drama get in one. So they touched on it very briefly and you know Jeffrey talked about how they were such good friends and how it kind of feels like a breakup and he's moved on now but like it was still a part of his life and I feel like there was a lot more to unpack from drama get in one and they haven't even mentioned drama get in two because it probably has hasn't happened yet in the timeline. God, the timeline of this series stretches so far. But anyway, they're definitely gonna go ahead and talk about Dramageddon in the later episodes. And I'm so incredibly excited to get a more of an insight into it because we've heard stuff about it, but we haven't heard everything. I'm sure there is still a lot to unpack. Even an interesting
interesting thing that Jeffrey mentioned is how he has his merch distribution center, Killer Merch, and they used to do James Charles's merch. And then after Drama Get In 2.0, when it, Jeffrey and James had their falling out, if some of you remember, James Charles's merch website was actually down Sisters Apparel for a few weeks, and that was because Jeffrey refused to make his merch. I bet you that is the reason. That is my conspiracy. And then now he severed his tie with James, and I'm just really, really excited to go ahead and see the behind the scenes of all of it and just get the truth to you. Okay, before we talk about my predictions for the rest of the series and kind of the next episode, um, I just want to say that I really, really like the way that this was edited and filmed. Obviously, the dramatic editing was funny, the music, how it had the ebbs and flows with the comedy, the serious, the touchy, like all that type of stuff. But I just like the way that it was filmed in terms of Andrew filming it. And obviously, Andrew always films the videos, but this time specifically, since it wasn't just people sitting down and talking, there was a lot of moving around, it actually felt like your point of view like it felt like you were walking around and seeing everything that was happening because obviously it's andrew holding the camera walking around showing everything so i don't know i thought that was a really nice touch like i actually felt like i was there sometimes so yeah i think that the editing was great the filming was great i don't really have any complaints about that i think there was some fluff in the beginning that could have been cut out but otherwise i give this episode honestly a 9 out of 10 honestly a great episode all in all i really really enjoyed it even though not a lot was revealed in this video i think it was a really good way to set up the nine part series and i definitely think there is so much more to come. Anyway, moving on into what is to come in the rest of the series, let's go ahead and talk about that. So Shane shows kind of a preview into the next episode, which will be the business of beauty. And Jeffrey and Shane are seen talking with some very professional, important looking people. And they're going to pull behind the curtains and give us an insider look into the beauty community. They're going to give us actual figures on how much things cost. They're going to tell us how everything works. They're going to tell us all the behind the scenes. And I'm so excited because the beauty community, even though I'm not in it because I don't do makeup, it is one of the industries in this world right now and online that makes the most amount of money. And there are so many shady things going on behind it. I don't really speak on beauty drama that much, but I think this will be my opportunity to do so. I do keep up with it. Do not get me wrong. I just don't really want to get involved in it. A lot of the time I don't care, but I think this time I definitely am going to care. So I'm super excited to go ahead and watch the rest of the series with you guys and give my commentary. This is honestly just the beginning. It is all just uphill from here because we have Drama Get In 1 to look forward to. We have Drama Get In 2 and we have the behind the scenes of the business in the beauty community and everything else that the series has to offer. So I'm so excited. I really hope you guys are too. I hope you'll go ahead and stick around for my after special videos i would love to have you here and of course if you have not make sure that you subscribe and turn on the post notifications bell so that you never miss another upload give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and please go ahead and tell me your thoughts on the first episode and any predictions or conspiracies you have for the rest of it i would love to know as always all my social media is just linked down below if you would like to go ahead and follow me over there and interact with me make sure you check out all my videos linked in the description and yeah guys that's it for me in this one i hope you enjoyed it i hope to see my next one and i hope that you have a great day and night wherever you are in the world bye